One of the striking things about Derek's work is that he he so clearly described what was at stake, what the ideas were. He made a whole series of really important distinctions um, in a way that uh, that really defined um, the the work that that we do. So I, d I don't think. It's possible to, for example, talk about population ethics uh, or to talk about ethics around reproduction and uh, genetic engineering without referring to to the distinctions that Derek made. Um, so, th so that I think is is the really strike his really really striking contribution to ethics and to philosophy. Uh, and as as I suggested, it it has these huge rippling uh, effects in terms of ethical debates across a wide range of, of subjects. It's often hard to know what the impact that any of us has on, on the world, um, whether, whether that's just within our private lives or, or broader. I think there are a few, a few individuals um, where you can clearly see the the impact of their work. I think that the greatest and most obvious impact of Derek's work in terms of public debates have related to uh, debates about IVF um, and about, uh, for example, parents' decisions to implant embryos or to to have certain types of uh, certain types of therapies that. Although I doubt very much that you'll find Derek being cited in the policy documents, I think the, the recognition of the significance of the non-identity problem, um, that, that having to, to address that actually did change certain types of arguments about, around reproductive technologies, that, that in the early debates, there was lots of talk about, well, are you going to be harming a child by uh, putting them through, I by conceiving them with IVF? Or are you going to be harming a child, for example, by allowing this older couple to have a child? Um, well, the obvious response, if you have recognised the things that Derek pointed out, is, of course not. This this child isn't otherwise wouldn't otherwise have been born. So we should certainly make sure that the child has as good life as possible. We should make sure that they're not going to be born with a very serious illness if there's a way to avoid that. Uh, but even if it were the case that a child were born to an older couple who, say, uh, die while the child is still growing up, unless that child is so miserable that they would rather never have been born, uh, it doesn't make sense to, to say this child has been harmed by for example, um, allowing this older couple to have IVF. So I, I think in that area, even if you can't see reasons and persons cited in the footnotes of the court transcripts or the, uh, or the policy documents, I think you can see very clearly the, the traces of his work. I think having had a particular interest in um, in issues about uh, well-being, about w what makes life valuable, in uh, questions of identity, uh, in issues around reproduction and bringing children into the world, um, I, I don't think there's anybody, any any philosopher uh, of of his stature who's who's written about these topics. Now, m many of these are are quite contemporary. I mean, the, these some of these specific questions would have been unimaginable a century ago. We wouldn't expect philosophers of a century ago to be talking about some of these questions. From my point of view, thinking more broadly about the people who who have written about ethics in the last uh, the last hundred years, I don't think there's there's anybody who has written as clearly uh, whose work has with has had such an impact upon, such a wide air, wide group of different 
areas. I think he's without doubt the 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 greatest moral philosopher of the the second half of the twentieth century.